This is next episode of a trip dedicated to the Alps, although there have already been a few shots from the Italian Dolomites and the Brenta Dolomites. For various reasons, I will not assemble this series based on travel days, I'll just combine some days into a larger whole, but not long enough to bore you and at the same time, long enough to show you the beauty of the French Alps. I will continue to add a few words about nature and mountains in subsequent episodes, then I will allow myself to include them in the film. Since the plan to cross the Great Alps was quite well prepared, we only ran away from the highway due to boredom and heat. The thermometer in the GS showed 36C and we drank as much water as we poured it on ourselves under our motorcycle jackets, not to overheat in the full Mediterranean sun. In France, right by passing Monaco, we left the A8 called the Provençal Autostrada and headed north. The route we took did not correspond 100% to the route of the Great Alps, but thanks to our detours, we have increased the number of turns and scenic aesthetic experiences and the surprises of my friends Piotr and Camille, who have Garmin GPS units. I planned the route and prepared it for TomTom -tom navigation, and surprises happened after importing my routes in Garmin. Why? There will be more about this later, along with an explanation of how to make it fully compatible between the above-mentioned devices maps. Meanwhile, our first day in the French Maritime Alps has passed. By mid-afternoon, we had climbed high enough that we could no longer hear the roaming cicadas. We found a roadside campsite, pitched our tents, we paid for the stay, and then bought a few wines for tasting, and after dinner, a bit relaxed, we went to bed. And now a few words about the Route des Grandes Alpes, or RDGA for short is located in its entirety in the French Alps and runs from south to north or vice versa, depending on which side of the route you start from. And now a bit of description of this road taken from Marek Burkhan's website. This route is about 720 kilometers of beautiful serpentines and passes from Menton, near Nice on the Mediterranean Sea, to thenon le bains on Lake Geneva. The route leads through 17 alpine passes, six of them are located above 2,000 memirs above sea level. Most sections of the Grand Alps Road are open from May, while the highest passes only from mid-June, depending on the amount of snowfall in winter. The construction of the road began in 1909 and was opened in 1913. It had an asphalt surface along its entire length in 1937. The current name, Route de Grandes Alpes, was given to this route in 1950. RDGA is described as the best mountain road in the world and I am completely inclined to this opinion. Its uniqueness lies in the fact that three or four days it travels almost exclusively through the mountains, passing only small towns away from civilization unlike the Dolomites or the Swiss part of the Alps where you often have to pass through crowded transit roads and towns. Beautiful views, steep, countless serpentines Bridges, tunnels, rushing rivers, waterfalls. Just ride. The next day, driving not entirely as originally planned through the French route, we left the paved road. Maybe I'll tell it differently. We missed bread for breakfast. So instead of continuing on the route, we went back to the town and... Everything was still closed and we didn't find a bakery. Well... We're going hungry. I quickly selected the path to the nearest point of the previously planned route, and we set off. The street led us out of the town to the nearby slopes, and the asphalt got a bit worse. After another two kilometers, it got even worse, until finally, after six or eight kilometers, it disappeared completely, and only a gravel road remained under our wheels, leading us subsequent traverses of the mountains. Gravel Road made us feel less disgusted and more concerned about where it would lead us. The packed pebbles were eventually replaced by quite large stones, and the road turned into a road good only for tractors. Finally, we returned to the paved road. We kissed it individually and collectively and pushed on, adding one off the main RDGA trail to our passes, namely Col de Braus, 1003M above sea level. 
Unfortunately, we missed the Col de Torini due to this detour. On the way, we bought a baguette, local dried sausage and yellow cheese in a quiet place, and the small town of Luceram, where we only met one young person and also from the Levant countries and a few older people. The town of Luceram experienced mass emigration in the 1980s and 1990s. When most people at working age, she left this town without seeing anything for herself and their future children in this place. Sad, but so true at the same time. We looked around a bit while drinking delicious morning coffee and eating a croissant, but no young person appeared in the restaurant or the neighboring shop. The same thing will probably happen to Polish towns, because the centralization of production and services has already reached Poland, and it is expected that cities such as Ilawa, Giaudowo, Sanok, and Piwa will become in just a few, or rather a dozen or so years, the same cities of old people as Luxeram in France. Passes in the order they occur on the route of the Great Alps, going from south to north. While driving on the previously mentioned gravel roads, we saw smoke in the distance and heard the smell of burning. The forest was burning, somewhere in the direction of our drive. The only thing we could do about it is to look carefully before descending into subsequent valleys, so as not to be surprised by the spreading fire. Actually, it wouldn't be fire that would be a problem in the valley, because the forest on the slope burns up the slope, but poisonous smoke that could be blown into these valleys. This was quite a justified fear due to the slight breeze, which accompanied us from the morning, giving respite from the summer French heat prevailing in the lower parts of the terrain. Finally in the town at the top, 
Rimplus, we left the fire behind us, and we didn't have to worry about this situation anymore. On the way further, this happened to us for another hour. You can feel the burn carried by the wind. If any of you have had a similar experience or knows how to behave in such situations, please let me know in the comments below this video. And now about Rimplas. It's a charming little town at the foot of the Dilla Madeline Fortress, designed by André Maginot. Yes, yes. The same from the fortifications located in the famous, although covered with inglorious history, the Maginot Line. The fortress was built from 1928 to 1930 and expanded in 1935 as one of the elements of the fortifications protecting the territory of France from the Italian side. In the town, 84 people live permanently, and the other number here are tourists admiring the works of Serge Doglio in the town located on each of the 22 streets and a beautiful view of the neighboring mountains. We have now entered Mercantour National Park for good in the Alps Maritimes region. The area of this national park is characterized by various microclimates due to its alpine and Mediterranean location and has a diverse topography. Thanks to this location, there is a variety of natural vegetation here and native trees are primarily pine and European larch. There is also a park in the park, Marcel Kronlein Arboretum, Kronla also known as Arboretum de Roure. The Arboretum is located at quite a high altitude. It starts from 1270 meters above sea level and reaches up to 1700 meters above sea level. The mission of the Arboretum is to collect various species of deciduous and coniferous trees from all the mountains in the world and protection of the natural flora of the Maritime Alps. So far, over 300 additional non-invasive species from around the world have been introduced there. The first trees were planted in 1988. Interestingly, artists, since 1989, they started exhibiting their works in the Arboretum. The featured artists included Arman, Folon, Ben, Cesar. Every year, a special exhibition is organized in the Arboretum, 
sponsored by contemporary artist Andy Goldsworthy, British artist sculptor. Col de la Cuyole and Col de Valberg are our next passes, and unfortunately, I gave up terribly. I did not include the Col de la Bonnette Pass in my navigation, because although it is not situated according to the French on the RDGA route, it is located high enough, 2715 meters above sea level, that it is worth visiting, mainly because of its great views and opportunities riding a short loop around the peak, the highest in Europe, an asphalt road that climbs to an altitude of 2,802 metern above sea level.